Hello everyone, welcome to another anatomy video. It's a great day to study anatomy and today we'll be going over the bones of the visceral cranium. In the last video I defined what the visceral cranium was as well as the neural cranium and the bones found in each group. And so if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and go back to the last video so you can get a better definition of what those two terms mean. But today we'll be going over the bones of the visceral cranium and the landmarks found on them. Now when it comes to facial bones, a lot of the facial bones are really small. And although they're small, they do have anatomical landmarks, but since these are gross anatomy videos, I'm not going to be going over any of the anatomical landmarks found on them. We focus mainly on larger bones that have landmarks versus the smaller bones that have landmarks. So when it comes to smaller facial bones, I'm only going to be naming the bones themselves and none of their anatomical features. Which then leads us to the first facial bone that we're going to discuss, which is the inferior nasal concha, which is located right here, and there's one on this side as well. Awesome, and this pair of bones is located within the nasal cavity, as well as this bone. This bone is called the vomer. The vomer is a bone that's not paired, and again, it's found in the nasal cavity. It actually articulates with this anatomical feature that we learned in the last video, which is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So the vomer is just inferior to the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. We step out of the nasal cavity and we go superior to it. There is a set of bones right here, this pair of bones, and these are your nasal bones. Now if we go directly lateral from the nasal bones into the bony orbit, we can see another pair of small bones that are found in the visceral cranium, and these are lacrimal bones. Now moving on to a bone that's very difficult to see from the external surface is the palatine bone. The palatine bone actually helps make up the bony palate, and I'll show you what the bony palate is. But this bone right here is called the palatine bone. The palatine bone is made up of two landmarks, the first one being this vertically oriented projection, which is called the perpendicular plate. of the palatine bone. And then we have this horizontally oriented landmark, which is called the horizontal plate. Of the palatine bone. Now in this next image, we could see the hard palate in its fullness. We are looking superiorly up towards the maxilla as well as the palatine bones. And right here we have our set of palatine bones right here. Here's one palatine bone and here's the second one. These landmarks right here, the horizontal plates of the palatine bone, just what I just mentioned right here, these right here. So these make up the roof of the mouth or the most posterior po portion of the roof of the mouth. So again, these are horizontal plates of the palatine bone. and they do articulate with uh, the maxilla. We'll get to that when we cover the maxilla. Now I want to show you a different image of the palatine bone since it's hard to see where it's actually located from this view. Once again, we could see both palatine bones. It works its way up. So this would be the horizontal plate and right here would be the perpendicular plate of the palatine bones. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and move on to the next bone, which is the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone also has two unique landmarks. The first one being this one that's going up superiorly towards the frontal bone, and that is called the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. And then this one right here, which is the temporal process. the zygomatic bone because it's oriented towards the temporal bone. Now if you remember from the last video, there was a zygomatic process of the temporal bone and now we have the zygomatic bone that has a temporal process. Well those two processes actually articulate. So the zygomatic process of the temporal bone comes right here, and articulates right there, 
And then the, right here is the temporal process, which articulates the zygomatic process. Pretty cool. Now let's look at this bone when it's um, articulating with the rest of the bones around it. So right here, we have the zygomatic bone along with all the other bones. Again, we can see the frontal process and the temporal process. And there's that zygomatic process that I was mentioning earlier of the temporal bone. Cool. Then we can go ahead and move on to the next one. This right here is the right maxilla. Now when you have two maxillas together, it's called maxillae. Let me go ahead and write that down. So maxilla, maxilla is singular, maxillae is plural, with that E. Awesome. And again, this is the right maxilla, and we're going to learn four different landmarks found on each maxilla. Starting with the first landmark, we have right down here on the inferior aspect of the maxilla, these sockets. And in these sockets, these are where all that your teeth reside that are found in the maxilla. These sockets are called dental alveoli of the maxilla. And that's where all your superior teeth sit in. Those are the sockets that they sit in. Now for the next part, we're going to have to use our imagination to kind of orient ourselves. Right here is where the nasal cavity would be if we had both maxillae here. This would be the nasal cavity. And right here would be a portion of the bony orbit. The reason why we need to know this is because of this landmark right here. This landmark is a little space, it's a hole, it's an opening, and this landmark is called the infraorbital foramen. And it's called that because it's just inferior to the orbit. Now the infraorbital foramen is kind of hard to see in this image, so I'm going to go ahead and switch images. Right here is a better view of the infraorbital foramen. As well as these little sockets that are called dental alveoli of the maxilla. We also have a projection coming out right here. This projection right here is projecting towards the zygomatic bone. So this is going to be called the zygomatic process. And this joins and articulates with the zygomatic bone right there. Now the last landmark that we need to learn on the maxilla is actually located on the inferior portion. So let's go ahead and go back to this image over here. Here we could see an inferior view of the maxillae as well as the palatine bones. And right here we have a division between both maxillae. Each one of these flat processes are articulating with this bone, which is the palatine bone. So these processes are going to be called the palatine processes. Okay? So the palatine process articulates with the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. So a way to remember that is that the maxilla articulates with the palatine bone. That's all you need to remember. It's the palatine process. And those are all the four landmarks that we need to know for the maxilla. So we can go ahead and return back to the image we were on and move on now to the mandible. The mandible is by far the bone with the most landmarks of the visceral cranium that we have to learn in gross anatomy. This is one complete bone, it's not a pair of bones. And this horizontal part right here, this transversely oriented part right here, this is going to be the body of the mandible. This vertically oriented portion of the mandible on both sides is called the ramus of the mandible. Again, ramus meaning branch. Returning to the body of the mandible, let me go ahead and clear some notes. We have a couple of landmarks. Again, we have these little bony sockets where the teeth reside, and just like the maxilla, these are called dental alveoli, but now it's parented to the mandible. So dental alveoli of the mandible. 
and we have tiny little holes here and one on the opposite end of the mandible. These little holes are found in the mental region, so we're going to call these mental foramen. Those are all the landmarks located on the body of the mandible, and now we have to cover all the landmarks found on the ramus of the mandible. So I'm going to go ahead and clear off some notes. The first landmark we're going to learn is this point right here. This point where the body of the mandible and the ramus mandible meet is called the angle of the mandible. You can also call it mandibular angle if you want, but regardless, angle of the mandible is what it's called. Now, on the superior end of the ramus, we have two projections. The most anterior of the two located here, as well as this one right here, these are called coronoid processes. And then this one right here, this is called the condyloid process. Now there is a gap between these two, and this gap located between the coronoid process and the condyloid process of the mandible, that notch is called the mandibular notch. Now the condyloid process is an interesting landmark because it also can be separated into two separate landmarks in itself. The most superior portion of the condyloid process is actually called head of the mandible. And that's located on both sides. And then there's a narrowing just beneath the head. This narrowing is called the neck of the mandible. So the mandible is pretty unique because it has two heads and two necks on one bone, which most of the bones that we've gone over only have one head, if any at all. Now there's one last landmark that we need to cover, and it's on the posterior aspect of the mandible. Now on the medial side of the each rami of the mandible, we have these two holes, one here and one here. Those are just called mandibular foramen. And those are all the landmarks found on the mandible. Now that was kind of fast, so I'm going to go ahead and review all the parts of the ramus because there's a lot. Let's go ahead and start with the head of the mandible, which is located here, as well as right here. And then this narrowing, it's called the neck of the mandible. This anterior projection is called the coronoid process. And let's not forget that the head of the neck and the mandible together make up the condyloid process. And then we have all these little sockets. And those collectively are called dental alveoli. This entire vertical part of the mandible is called the ramus. And this horizontal portion down here is called the body. And on the anterior portion of the body of the mandible, we have two little holes found in the mental region. So that's gonna, those are going to be called the mental foramen, which again is shown right here. And those are all the landmarks that we need to know for the visual cranium. Hope this video was helpful and keep on studying hard, guys. Take care.